Hi, Cosmoprof community. How are you? I am so excited to be here with you guys. It's truly an honor. Um, you guys in particular have a warm place in my heart. I feel like Cosmoprof in general is just always comes to every hairdresser's rescue in every situation. <laughs> and today we're talking about something really exciting because um, it's something that you can immediately use right when you go back to the salon. Now I'm here with Wella Hair Professionals and I am their North American and ambassador and I'm Brianna Cisneros. I wanna make sure that uh, I introduce myself before I dive in. I just get so excited when it comes to hair. Um, but yes, I'm Brianna Cisneros and some new Wella products just hit the market. And I wanna make sure that you know how to best utilize these products, okay? And not only that, I also want to um, kind of talk about other options uh, when it comes to somebody that needs great coverage, especially clients that need great coverage and wanna stay modern and fresh and on top of their look. So this is, this is something near and dear to my heart because I feel like not only is it the bread and butter, but if you change someone's life in this area, they are a client for life. They are going to be someone who sings your praises, who's constantly coming back because you're able to nail down a formula specifically catered to all of their needs because no one has the same situation going on in their head, okay? Sometimes people can have a lot of gray right in the front of their head and are you mixing for just that area? Are you mixing for something all over their head? Do you need something that's really intense and heavy and, um, and can really like pack a punch when it comes to gray coverage? Or are you gonna just be gray blending and blending something away, okay? So all of that comes into the lifestyle of your client, the maintenance, but let's get into the technique first. I wanna give you kind of that like meat and potatoes, instant gratification of something that you can go straight into your salon and use immediately. And this is gonna be different, totally different than what you normally see when you're applying gray coverage, I guarantee it, because we're taking this one step at a time as we go. We're lightening while we're gray covering at the exact same time. We're not gonna go in and apply all of our foils and then go in and apply all the color or vice versa. We're actually gonna do them both at the exact same time. So let's dive in. Without further ado, this is my lovely model, okay? She is um, about a level five, six. Now, the new shades that they've come out with are cool, intense natural shades. So they're the intense naturals, which are designed specifically for coarse, resistant gray hair, but they have also a, a cooler tonality. So what do we know about cool shades? They tend to look a little bit darker or they definitely help counterbalance warmth. So it's a stroke zero two, so it's a matte, green and green can really kind of scare people like wait what you know but this is so important to know because um i'm going to show you what it looks like toned and beautiful and not green at all eventually and we'll talk deeper and dive into the techniques i use here it'll be a wealth of knowledge but for now we're going to set this beautiful woman aside and we're going to focus on the client at hand which is this lovely lady right here so I'm gonna start by applying these two. I already did one entire side in the front, and now I'm gonna do the next side. So what I'm going to do with my first section is part off. It's essentially a diagonal from the top recession all the way to the crown. Then pull that down, okay? And you have your top section, and your bottom section, okay? And we're gonna clip this up and away without it getting on any of the previously colored hair. So we'll just give it a nice snug clip at the base. Now for this section, I'm not going to worry so much about, um, I'm not going to worry so much about the highlights being at the root. So this is going to be an express technique that you are gonna use to get your gray coverage and to also achieve a balayage look with the effect of a partial. So we're getting balayage in the ends, a partial highlight, 
through the top, as well as gray coverage, all in one shebang. And it's gonna be pretty quick. Now I use my tail comb to section. So I like to get pretty intense with my um, color applications and really make sure that I'm not getting it on their skin. So I go through with free guard all around her hairline. So if it looks like it's a little bit glistening, that's that color free guard, just to create a barrier so that she doesn't have uh, anything going on where I don't want it. No birthmarks or any surprises after her visit, right? So I'm gonna actually start by just a simple color application at the root. And it's really important to note the amount of product going on the hair. You want to really make sure that you're saturating the hair fully. Now, when you're working with a different textured hair or curlier hair, it's sometimes really helpful to have a second clip on hand and just pull the hair down straight so that nothing kind of jumps into your section. And also that's another reason why I like to use my tail comb because I like to get really clean sections and it helps me to just get through that hair. All right, we're almost done with this section. Now I'm not going to apply the gray coverage through the top yet. I'm going to stop here and grab my blonde or plex. So this formula that I'm using is five, five stroke zero two. So it's a, a natural with that matte ash color mixed in. It's like, honestly, so I've been playing with this and it's definitely different. It's just like, I feel like a lot of clients who have gray hair always complain that their base color looks too warm. So what's happening is not only are you covering the gray, but because of the peroxide, you're also getting a little bit of lift on their natural. So we're pretending right now that my client has gray hair, by the way, she has, she's, she's 75% gray. <laughs> All right. With a doll head, that's kind of what you have to do. So what I mixed for 75% coarse resistant gray hair was just the straight five, five stroke zero two. But if she did have, um, you know, what about that other 25% or if she did have 50% coarse gray hair and then 50% a level six and you go in with the same formula all over because all of those hairs are mixed in, you're going to create warmth on her natural. So this is why these shades are just crucial, completely crucial for, um, just having in your arsenal, having as uh, something to grab for because clients are gonna complain about, you know, my hair always has this like glowing warm effect because peroxide just naturally exposes underlying pigment. So you have to have the tonality strong enough to combat that. So now I'm gonna start in with my first highlighted section and I'm gonna go right here. So I'm not worrying so much about the roots. So I can go in with a diagonal back and a pretty heavy section here in the front, okay? I'm not worried, I'm keeping the depth around her face here, and then the face, face frame will come into play when we reach that top section, okay? So I'm taking a very heavy highlight, always this first point right here, which is at her recession, is going to be a big pickup. One, two, three. Now, the reason I apply the base color first is because you cannot take a big pickup and tease and then paint afterwards and get the same amount of saturation that you need. It's just going to be harder for you. It's not gonna work out great. So hang on one second, let me grab my comb. I'll place a little bit of product on my foil like that, okay? And then I'll place the hair on the product so that it helps those ends really stick down good. Now I'm going to make sure that I'm getting a heavy amount of product on those ends. And I'm using my bigger brush. I love this brush. So Wella makes this brush that's nice and wide. So you can see it has this like really nice wide um, bristles to paint with. So I can get my diagonal back painting pattern in there with 
great ease because it's just one big swoop and you've got a diagonal back. Now, I don't want to surface paint too much. I really want this product to go all the way through the section and give me the most amount of lift that I can possibly get. And then just surface paint up just a bit to blend it, but we're really relying heavily on that tease. So you wanna make sure that you're, that you're teasing enough. And I'm going to just do a few of these sections. I don't have to do a lot because I'm able to get that heavier pickup. Hey, Brianna. Hi, how are you? Good. You're looking great. And this is so much fun to watch. We had Amanda Krebs say that she loves your haircut and color. So <laughs> shout out. <Thank> you. <laughs> and just quick question, since you are working with a textured hair client, would you mm -hmm. recommend saturating both sides of each panel with the 55 stroke 02? Like, let's say she has really thick, mm -hmm. coarse textured hair. Yes. So, so that's an interesting question because I feel like um, it's two part. When I'm saturating both sides of each section, um, if her hair is denser, meaning more hairs per square inch, that's when I would like be really saturating both sides, making sure that that saturation, no matter what, you want that saturation to be a heavy saturation. Um, she doesn't have that much root to touch up. This is her root area. She has about, you know, an inch to touch up right here. So, but you want it, you want it to be like you're icing a cake. So if you feel like you're jipping yourself with that frosting and you're going to be less wanting, <laughs> then, then you're not going to get the kind of coverage that you need. So saturation is extremely important. So the coarser their hair, the more intentional you're going to be about saturating both sides. However, my client actually has curly hair. So this is a good example of not just because they have a hair texture doesn't mean that the density is all the same. So, so she has naturally very curly hair, but per square inch, she actually doesn't have that much hair. <laughs> my doll head, my poor doll head. She has a decent amount of hair for sure. But, um, but to, to really kind of um, need to do that, uh, you know, double like here, you're applying here and then up. I, sometimes I'll apply down and then I'll apply up, right? And so then when I take my next section down, this is getting doubly applied. So I'm applying it down again, right? And that's what you want it to look like, like that frosting on a cake scenario. Cool. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Question. Yeah. And also I had a question from Tracy Galloway. Mm -hmm. She says she has a client that is a natural level six and pulls super brassy. She mm -hmm. wants to be lifted to a level eight. And she has used several brands, but still can't cut the brass as much as she wants. Any suggestions? Most definitely. I think this is very common. A lot of people are a level six and they want to be a level eight, right? Um, <laughs> and there's a lot of tricky things that you can do with hair color, okay? For sure. But you really have to ask yourself, is this a lightener? scenario. Is this something that we're going to have to use lightener to really, like if she wants a truly ash tone, it might be something that you're going to really want to consider pre-lightening beforehand because, um, because you don't necessarily want to, to lift with color to, to get cancel out all of the, all of the warmth that you're going to see. Right. I'm going to show you a great example on my other doll head who has um, kind of a similar situation. She doesn't really love the warmth and, um, and it's toning with a level eight on a underlying pigment of an eight, as well as, you know, toning on a level seven with the underlying pigment of a level seven to cancel out all of that warmth using these shades, um, to show you how beautifully forgiving they are. But, but you could use these shades, um, essentially to lift and to tone at the same time. But I would recommend from a level six, there's a lot of underlying pigment under there from a level six to a level eight. Um, and you could use you could use some high lift, but then yeah, you would still most likely have to tone afterwards because there's just too much underlying pigment to break through at a level six. 
to be honest with you. So that's going to be a free lightning situation. And a lot of people, I think, um, like it's incredible the amount of lift you can get with color, but you do have to expect a certain amount of warmth, right? When you're lifting with color and um, really want to combat that with, this is kind of like the most exciting shades though for you because they are specifically cool enough to work within um, kind of like what you're talking about. Like you can actually get lift with them, but but because we're also talking about great coverage, you're getting that lift at a level six, but you're also getting the great coverage. So that's kind of more specific to what we're talking about. All right. So now, and we're gonna get into a lot of product knowledge and I'm gonna go over everything I used on her to prep her and everything we're gonna use afterwards. Um, but I'm gonna dive just right back into this technique really quick. All right, all right. Actually, we have another question from Sarah. Great. If, what other shades are new? Okay, oh my gosh. This is like the most exciting like moment for me because we have the Intense Cool Naturals, which was like a major like need just in general that I think a lot of hairlines kind of miss out on is this, uh, the fact that we really need to be combating warmth when we're covering gray because you're hitting that other hair as well as that gray hair. So we're tackling that. Um, they also came out with these beautiful Bellini shades that are like, they have warmth in them, but they're just like the most beautiful kind of pinky, goldy, sunset, champagne-y hair. And it's insanely beautiful. And those are some of the color touch shades, which I would 110% comb this beautiful model with um, because I like to have cool roots with warmer, softer ends. I'm into that. Like even in my own hair, I like to make sure that I have like cooler on my roots and then kind of that pinky champagne happening on my ends. Now with this first section, I took kind of in between a finer weave and a heavier weave, okay? So it's still a pretty heavy weave pickup. And this might change based on the texture of your client's hair. If you have a client with a little bit curlier hair, you might want to actually do a little bit of a heavier pickup because then when it coils together, you can see all of that beautiful dimension that you created. I'm going to give it a double fold here. And we're going to leave just the, maybe not even a quarter of an inch. I'm talking millimeters at the root. So um, for that gray coverage. So when you're applying lightener, you can absolutely apply the lightener and it'll take care of the job when it comes to gray coverage because you're actually blending those grays away um, while you're lightening. And my next section here is going to be a little bit of a heavier pickup. Okay. So we're, this is going to be opposite of what we just did. First, we applied our gray coverage underneath, and then we applied the balayage. Now we're actually going to apply the foils here in these front two foils, and then we're going to tackle the rest of it and, and apply all the foils, and then we're going to tackle the gray coverage. So a little bit heavier pickup here, and these are spaced pretty close together. And now this foil is going to get applied just a little bit lower than my front foil, allowing for more root depth. Because remember I said, this is nice and modern and gray coverage actually is like, can be very modern. Um, when like in the technique, because essentially shadow tones are everything right now. So you could easily do an entire highlighted balayage technique and then do um, a gray coverage afterwards as your shadow tone just leave it on longer for the processing time um, so that you don't have to change up your techniques if you're doing a true um, root shadow. So now I'm gonna double up my foils. I like to double up and sandwich the hair in between the foils because I don't wanna squish the lightener to the root. I wanna make sure that it's all in there nice and I don't wanna add too many creases along the way. I don't want anything disrupting that beautiful processing that's happening. So the first one's just a double fold so that it's not in her eyes. And then this kind of helps keep it out of her eyes right there. So we're gonna change it up. And now I'm gonna start applying the foils almost horizontally. We're following this sectioning. If you wanna come in nice and close, my lovely camera, Becca. Um, this is, the, we're gonna mirror exactly where this section is taken here. 
And then we're gonna start pivoting this way until we end up horizontal to my section on top. Okay, so we'll start here. And this is going to be our very first highlight through here. And we're only gonna do a few foils. This is definitely for somebody who's um, wanting something that is like a, you know, break up their everyday great coverage, add in something that's like a little bit more light. So this is my version of well as Lux Light. So they have a collection that came out that's Lux Light and it's just applying um, some highlights to your great coverage in different ways to make it really modern and, and feel really fresh so that the client doesn't just feel like they're coming in to cover their grays, they're coming in for a quick service, like a quick service that makes a huge difference. And now with all of this dimension being added back in for fall and with um, kind of the trends and staying on top of the trend where things are a lot deeper and the highlights are a little bit heavier, this, is, this couldn't come at a more perfect time. So we're gonna just apply four foils here. Looks great, Maybe. Brianna. I love how it's an express way to provide great coverage as well as dimension through the highlights and balayage. And yes. just so you know, we got a comment from Sarah that she used 88 stroke 02 plus 6% on her level seven client, and it was really controlled. So great tip and good to know, right? Amazing. The control is everything. The control is definitely everything. I feel like having that zero two, um, you can watch it deposit. It doesn't, it's not going to go super dark. Um, and I think a lot of that has to do with the me plus as well that's added in there. So it's very controlled, but it also like really controls the warmth to where you don't feel like, yeah, it's exposing a ton. That's Awesome. So if you notice, I just slid my foil all the way down to where I'm leaving that root out. So I highlighted up to a certain point, but we're going to apply gray coverage here. So I'm sliding my foil down so that I can put the foil exactly where I left off with that lightener, giving it a half fold and then two on the end. Come all look up, please. Thank you. <laughs> so yeah, I, I'm this is just one of those things where it's like one of those products that you absolutely know is going to be absolutely popular. Like, I think that this is going to be a go-to product for you guys, which is what makes me so excited about it is because in essence, it's just exactly what you need. <laughs> That's all it is. It's as simple as that. It's exactly what you need in your arsenal to, um, cause it's exactly going to combat, you know, what your clients aren't wanting to see with when it comes to gray coverage. They're not, not all of them, of course, obviously they want to love cool tones, but, um, but this is kind of the name of the game. I feel like it's that bread and butter. I can tell you how many times people say, Oh, you know, I've had a formula that my stylist, they lived in London and they were the only ones who could get me, you know, to this root formula, people are obsessive about their root color formulas. Um, and there are a lot of options within Wella for gray blending and for beautiful things that still um, look certain ways. And you really have to analyze and think, what type of a client is this that I'm working on? Is this a client that wants more of that translucent finish? It's very much like painting. You have to think of it like you're using either an acrylic paint, a water paint, or even like doing makeup. So you want to envision, is this some, somebody that wants that total coverage with their foundation, or do they want to slightly see their freckles through and have it be softer and more natural? So I just think that um, that when you really kind of open up your artistry to, to what that, like what it can be and all of the things that you have at your fingertips, it's gonna be really exciting to intermix things with these shades as well. I'm using them straight because I really want you to see, especially on my next model, exactly um, how they come out so that you can just know, okay, this looks like that. And you can envision for yourself how you want that to look on your client. But um, they are gonna be, I mean, imagine mixing that with like seven stroke one and something that has a different tonality of warmth. Um, green can sound scary, right? Or matte in general, 
But um, I think that it's like probably the number one thing that you hear clients say is, I see red. I see red, I see red, right? And you're like, what red are you looking at? This is a perfect chocolate brown. But what they don't realize is in chocolate brown that those things do exist, you know, red and warmer tones. So this is gonna be a helpful tool to where you're like, okay, you see red, you know? We're gonna put green on you. You're not gonna see red anymore. It's gonna look natural. It's gonna look soft and, and it's opaque coverage, but it's kind of insane the amount of shine that you still get. So I'm really happy about that. Now we're gonna go through and start applying the solid color. So I'm going to leave these two foils because those are the hairline foils. And I want, I'm want i also going to balayage these tips, but if I connect the tips together and balayage them, I can't get in to do my gray coverage. So now I want to be very cautious about what order I do things in and be very thoughtful. Everything that you should do should be very, very thoughtful behind it. So I'm going to start with my gray coverage and I'm even going, as I'm applying it, I'm pushing it up into the foil just a little bit, okay? Just to make sure, just to have that reassurance that I'm really getting in there. And now I'm really making sure that I lift that section up, apply, put that section down, apply. Um, my sections are a little bit further spaced out. So I want to just make sure that that's all happening. And especially when you're applying a gray coverage around a foil, you really want to make sure that you're focused on the ends of those foils, that there's not going to be a random spot left and that you're pushing the product kind of just a little bit inside the foil really heavily so that, um, so that there's just nothing missed and everything's totally accounted for. And if a section is too thick, you got to break it in half and make sure that you're not taking sections that are too thick when it comes to gray coverage as well. So your saturation, the way that you even simply mix the product to make sure there's no clumps, all of that is really going to be really, really important for successful gray coverage. Timing as well. So once we get this applied, she's going to sit there are ways to make it go faster. You can use this under a climason, okay? And that'll take your full processing time almost down in half, which is epic. Um, but definitely the climason is kind of the heat that you want to use. I don't use any hooded dryers for any of my um, processing. I only use the climason, and, and that's definitely what Wella would recommend as well. So I am applying that lightener to the underside of the foil flipping the foil over, right? Hey, Brianna, those are really great tips, especially for great coverage, which is one of the biggest money makers in the salon, right? Would you totally. also agree that uh, the Pure Balance technology really helps to keep an even result from root to tip? Well, just you wait. I'm so glad you brought that up because um, my next model, <laughs> I apply this exact same formula from root all the way through the ends. And I'm like, uh, it, it's the one, it's like so funny because it seems like something so simple, but it is not simple. When you're used to getting one result and then all of a sudden you're getting another result, you know, and you're like, oh my gosh, I don't even have to change my formulation. I can actually apply this from root to end and get the same kind of color and shine and depositing. Um, that pure balance technology has changed the game entirely, 100%. And so having that with these matte colors um, is crucial because you're not overwhelming or overloading um, the cuticle with like too much dilute or too much, uh, yeah, just like in those ashier tones, they can, they can grab darker to the eye. They can appear to grab darker because they're, you're working with ashier things that don't reflect as much light. So I'm gonna show you the difference between two levels that are the same, one ashy and one warm, and how the ashy one does appear darker, but from root to end, it's exactly the same deposit. It's incredible. Um, and exactly, it, like it's exactly what you're looking for. So now I wanna show you this. I don't wanna miss this moment. Um, I applied the entire root, okay, to this section, except for these front two. This is really important because I'm actually going to apply to the ends here. 
a balayage piece, leaving out the ends in the back, over directing everything forward, giving it a tease, just one tease, because I also don't want to tease this hair too much, because I want to, I don't want anything to mat up. I want to make sure that when I brush it out, it's very easy, easy to brush out at the bowl, which is what I totally use my um, color motion post color treatment for. It has the best uh, technology in it to kind of get that tease out. And I'm gonna go way in depth into that in just a moment as well. So here I'm using, I'm doing a diagonal back and I'm combining all of those sections together. And the reason I don't do the root touch up on her face is I just wanna be very thoughtful. I wanna be thoughtful about the fact that I'm not leaving um, something that could potentially stain her on her face just sitting on her face, processing, developing there. Um, but that, those kinds of things are huge for clients in the salon. You really want to think about those things because they're sure thinking about those things. <laughs> you know, I'm going to drop this down below her tees. There we go. So that we get a really nice, clean fold. Beautiful. Hey, Brianna, any chance we can get, or if Becca can maybe just show us some of the products when you have a sec, just so that and if any of the viewers are new to Wella and they know which products to shop for. Absolutely. Let me grab them for her, actually, because sure. I have them all just on hand right here. So we've got right here your 5502, your 66, and your 7702, your 88. So this is what you're going to be looking at. Beautiful. And these are the new shades, right? Yes, these are all the new shades that I've been kind of like super overly, like I'm just like pumped, pumped, pumped about. So now we're going to go in and this is the 5.5 five that I'm applying. So just to reiterate, this is the 5.502 five that I'm applying. I'm going into that foil, making sure that the product is touching everywhere around that foil, lifting this section up, applying into the foil underneath it, making sure the edges are all accounted for. Always go back and grab more product. If you think when in doubt, grab more product, saturate more. So now before I do this final root touch up here, I'm actually going to bring everything forward, combine these two sections, tease, And I'll do my last little tipping before I even hit the root coverage in the front. And this is a little bit different. And the only reason I can do this is because of how fine the section is in the very front that I took. If the section is too thick, you're not going to want to do this. You're going to want to apply that root color first or break this into two sections and not combine them together. I'm going to bring that down. Just give it one fold. But I, because I can lift this up and look at how beautifully that helps me get everything out of the way and I can easily go in and apply that last bit of root color just here. Sometimes um, it's like very different depending on each client. You want to think about their hairline, um, you know, how much gray is there. Uh, what's actually happening because um, sometimes this is where it's most resistant and you would want to go in and apply that right away. And then sometimes it's the opposite. These hairs are finer and they always want to grab darker. So either way, you're really going to want to consider um, exactly what that hair texture is, how resistant the gray is, and at what point are you going to really go in and do that? So then what I would do is I would let this all process Okay, I would pull the foils out, rinse it all together. Sometimes I, I, you can go as far as rinsing the roots before you pull the foils out, but you always want to think about the fact that the water is combining with that root color and going into the foils sometimes and is just sitting in there. So you want to be careful about that. I typically take the foils out first rinse everything with cool water if they can stand it. And then um, and then I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna shampoo. And this is another new line that I went from platinum to brunette. And I can't even tell you like how much this has been 
a saving grace for me. So before I did her color, I actually applied the Scalp Protect, which is so simple. It's like the simplest product to apply because it has a squirt bottle that you can just go in and apply at the root really easily and massage through that root area. And then there's another one that you can apply quickly to the ends. It's your pre-color treatment, which is gonna even out the entire porosity of the hair. So you can prep the hair. And this is an incredible service because it makes it luxury. Not everybody like does this step. A lot of people skip it. But the cool thing is, is when you add extra things like this, they'll be like, oh, what are you doing? You're like, oh, you know, just like a face primer, just like when you would use this or that. That's a good way to kind of talk about it. I'm priming your hair for everything that we're going to do to it. Okay. So this is going to go through the ends and you can give it a quick, like blow out really quick. But I've noticed that if I even just kind of leave it, come back, mix, it's pretty much kind of evaporated and ready to go. So um, very, very simple to use. And then after she processes, we're going to go in with the shampoo. So this is going to be your shampoo. And then a step that I never skip, ever, whether I am using lightener, doing a root touch-up, color through the hair, I'm always bringing the pH back to normal hair, okay? So there's several different options of this. Um, this is a new great option for it because it's specifically geared towards the color that you're using, which is that the post color treatment. Okay, so this is uh, the color motions version of the post color treatment that brings the pH exactly to where it needs to be. Okay, so that's when you would use this. It goes on for like 30 seconds. You're done. And then you can decide if you're going to use the mask or the conditioner. I suggest using the mask because it has um, bond builders in it. So not only is it going to save the color of your hair, it's going to build the bonds in your hair. It's going to do absolutely everything from start to finish that that helps combat the degradation of color. Degrada degradation of color. That was a too long of a word. But, um, but anything, the free radicals in the air, the sun, the water, everything is waging war against your color. And so um, as well as obviously the condition of your hair. So you have to handle each one of those things, the condition, the con outside conditions, and, um, and then something that molecularly works together with the color to help it last longer. So I would recommend this mask. It's absolutely fabulous and send them home with the conditioner. That's my personal, what I would do. But now I want to talk really specifically and show you the end result. So da -da -da, the moment you've all been waiting for. Um, this is my lovely model. I've used three different formulas on her. So I'm really excited to share her with you because she had gnarly hair before this. Okay. So this color in the front right here, all of this, her end color is our starting point. Okay, so it's about at a level eight right here, kind of an, a yellow level eight, which is very normal. That's very much like what you could expect uh, in the salon, okay? So that's where we started. And what I did was I took a diagonal section and this is my eight, eight stroke zero two mixed with pastel developer, all right? And I mix that one to two. So one part the color, two parts pastel developer to make a gloss out of these intense cool naturals. So intense cool naturals are actually something that they are, are you know, you would automatically assume that you're going to use these for gray coverage. Okay. But, but using it as a gloss to combat warmth has been incredible. And yes, because of the Pure Balance technology, you can literally see, I'll just comb it with my brush so you can see. You can literally see the even coverage from root all the way to ends right there. It's like a perfect, and it's shiny, but it's also like a soft kind of ashier tone. Um, it's kind of annoying that it's right next to this yellow, <laughs> but it gives you a great before and after. And then I just tap down her root around her face um, just to leave a little bit of that before, but to show you how incredibly, like perfectly it grabs from root to end, as well as this side, what I started out, majority of her hair actually is the before color. So right here in the front, I'll get in nice and close for you. This is, uh, this is, 
what we started out with, which is basically the underlying pigment of a natural level seven. And then I did more of a root smudge technique, leaving some of this as her highlight right there. So this is a little bit just of a combed in highlighted effect. And you're gonna be looking at that root color for how the outcome really is. It's gorgeous. This is gonna be a, a 100% go buy it right now. <laughs> go to for a root shadow. 77 stroke 02 is like, and like the, they're both, these are like money, money in your pockets, guys. <laughs> and so then, so on the back here, we used our darkest shade, okay? So, um, and it's gonna be the 55 stroke 02. I wanna show you her before. We left this on for the full processing time. This is going to be her before. So I'm gonna unveil that crazy gray that she has. So you wanna determine the percentage of gray before you formulate for anybody. She has quite a bit of gray going on here, okay? So this is something that 100% you're gonna need to you're going to need to uh, deal with and use something. And it is, feels actually even a little bit coarse. So I'm not sure where they actually got this hair from, but um, this was kind of the perfect scenario to, to snag something like this. And I actually, she started out with about a level, she started out with about a level uh, five, six on this, or not started out. This section hasn't been touched by any color. And this is kind of what the mannequins hair looks like when it's warmer. So I wanted to show you a real life situation, like real talk. When you have an ashier tonality, it can appear a little bit slightly darker because ashier colors absorb light and warmer colors reflect light. So you're gonna see the warmer color reflecting more light. And then in those ashier tones, it absorbs a little bit more of the light, but they are the same level. Cool. So that's just a great like to remember. And then she has even coverage from root to ends because she literally had gray from root all the way to her ends. And it's a opaque, hundred percent, totally covered, but without like taking away from the shine of the matter. All right. So then what we're going to do, um, what I really want to kind of speak into is just really a lot more about you and your client's relationship and, and their relationship with gray. And so I think it's really important for you guys to be able to, to speak to your client in a way that um, addresses all of their issues. And with, when it comes to the consultation, 110% of the time, the more questions you ask and the more clues you can get to perfecting that perfect formula, the better, especially with gray coverage. Make sure you guys are measuring your product Make sure you're mixing it all the way. Make sure the timing is right. Make sure the saturation is right and write it all down. Because this grew me as a stylist, 100%. I felt, like, I felt like when I could look at exactly what I used, I know their starting point, and then I could see them come back in for their appointment and see what the color is doing on their hair, what small things I might wanna change, do I want to add a little bit of 7-1, seven, 7-stroke seven 1, which is a level 7 ash with a different tonality, to my 8-8-stroke eight, eight, 02? And if you hadn't taken those notes specifically, you wouldn't really know the answer to that, right? You want to see, and my, my formulas look crazy. Like I'll have five grams of this and add a dash of that. And I'll even use the word inch if it's just like a special mix and I'm adding just an inch, you know, inch meaning squeeze it out of the tube, an inch. <laughs> so I have all of these notes that I took. Um, and then I grew myself, not completely out of that. I still absolutely take notes on my formulas, except especially the super complicated ones. But I grew into a situation where I felt like my muscle memory with formulations just exploded. Like it was like, I know exactly what I used last time down to the gram, you know? And I'll know what, how I'm gonna tweak it and what I'm gonna use next time. But I don't feel like I would have had that hadn't I written everything down. So not to lecture, but that's so important. It's so, so important. Um, so yeah, so I'm really excited to have gotten to share all of that with you. I feel like, um, there's always a, a way to make your client feel modern and fresh 
and uh, when it comes to gray coverage. And then there's always things that you can use, even if your client doesn't have gray, and things that you can utilize that you might not have thought of before for like a root shadow situation. But the exciting thing to me is that you're gonna be able to get the perfect root shadow and combat their grays. So you're gonna absolutely be able to have a root shadow you can use at the bowl that's gonna cover their grays with opaque coverage. So that's incredible without going too warm on you. So I'm telling you guys, it's gonna be a bread and butter product. Um, so I feel like I just really hope that this is very informative for you. Um, thank you guys all for joining us. And also, um, I just wanted to show you guys one last time what the color motion line looks like um, to help really keep the longevity of your color for across the across the Wella spectrum of color. I think that this is going to be another go-to thing. So these are vital tips, vital information. I would just go home to the salon and use it right away. Thanks, Brianna. I was actually going to say we got a couple of comments in the chat regarding Color Motion Plus that someone said they really love it. And then someone also asked how often they should use the mask. What's your recommendation for Great. frequency of using the mask for Color Motion Plus? Absolutely. I feel like it. it's with um, masks, especially ones now that it has like the bond builder um, with Wella built into it, as well as other ingredients that help lock the color in, it's gonna come down to the actual integrity of your client's hair. So um, sometimes I'll have a client use something a lot more often in the beginning and then slowly wean their, their themselves back to something that's a little bit more regular. So sometimes I'll have a client use the mask even a couple times a week, maybe at first, and then I'll use it like once a week and then once every two weeks. Um, I think once every two weeks is a great place to land. Um, I think that there's always a reason to kind of rebuild the structure of the hair from things happening in the world. But I know a lot of people that'll use a mask once a month, um, but their hair is like, at that point, your hair doesn't have a ton of chemical things happening to it. So if you're pre-lightened um, or balayaged or highlighted in any way, I would at least be using a mask once every two weeks. Perfect, really? thank you. And somebody else mentioned, Heather Davis said she can't wait to see the end result um, from, the, from your first model of the curly hair, but do you mind sharing when they can go for more education and maybe the visual that inspired Absolutely. you to create this look? Absolutely, I'm gonna post everything on my stories. Um, I'm actually gonna be doing several posts after this. So um, just kind of like the how-tos and breaking some even more of the steps down and how you can change up your for like your foil placement. So you'll be able to see all of that um, on my page, which is in my Instagram account, which is just my name, Brianna Cisneros. I say just my name, but it's Cisneros is not always easy to spell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can share your Instagram. That would be great. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Is there any other questions, Lindsay, or anything else that anybody is curious about? I mean, it could absolutely have to do with anything. Um, are there any things that you guys might have run into in the salon or requests lately? I know COVID has been an interesting time right now for everybody. Um, and uh, just there can be some obstacles when it comes to that. Uh, I think when you're working around the ears with gray coverage and you have masks here, um, I definitely would probably suggest to clients to either wear a disposable mask that they can keep around their ears that you can work around and throw away and replace afterwards, or um, they'll have to hold, you know, they can hold it with their hands. I've seen a lot of that happening too, but how's everybody doing? No other questions, but that's super Great. helpful. Um, but thank you so much. This was really fun to watch and I loved seeing the results of the intense natural cool shades on the different quadrant of the mannequin. So oh, thank good. you. So glad. I was actually very excited to see how this would do root to tips and I can't be more stoked now to use it. Like I'm sold. <laughs> I sold myself. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> so yeah, um yeah, beautiful. Enjoy, guys and uh Thank you, everybody who's a part of the Cosmoprof community. Thank you to all of you from Wella. You guys just, I have, have such a huge place in my heart for the product, all the things you do, everything you stand for. So thanks for giving me this opportunity to share some, some stuff with you.
Thank you. Awesome work. All right. Bye, everyone. Have a great day.